All right, so I want to talk about, because um, it's Father's Day, I want to talk about, like, my dad's family and um, stuff that, like, a major linchpin in my family and their history and all the BS and a lot of the reason why I'm homeless today. And um, it starts a lot with, like, um, like my dad let's, let's talk about my dad right so my dad he um like like before i was born um dude like you know he he grew up living uh with his parents right and uh his parents have kind of always been there for him for the most part maybe not so much his dad or whatever but um my grandfather who I never got to meet and I'll get to that in a bit and um so uh or the best place to kind of start is is that uh from what I can collect what I've collected from going and visiting my family throughout the, the years multiple times the different stories that they all tell because none of them really line up and they're not all exactly the same but there's so I've had to pick and pull the truth out of this mess of different stories and different accounts of what these people lie about because they're they're all compulsive liars and um, so basically like my dad he in his early 20s he like got into growing weed or whatever right and um, this dude, he split, he got caught, and I think he was released on bail or whatever, and uh, he ended up splitting and fleeing for seven years, right? And um, I don't know a whole lot about what really happened before him, but my his my knowledge of his history kind of starts there, and um, but I know that you know he grew up living. In, near my uh you know where i'm from the same town city i'm from and um the guy uh he split for seven years because he got caught selling weed and so he had like some chunk of money or whatever that he was holding on to from all this that happened i guess i mean i don't know i don't really know what his deal is but um you know he's always had his family helping him He's always had my my grandma my my grandfather paid for the home, and um, so you know at some point my grandfather he split and went to Alaska and had been staying there and my very, my uncles and stuff had gone up there to work with him throughout you know various instances and leading up to the point where he died, which. Um, which uh you know i'll get to in a second here but but my dad he he split for seven years and eventually his attorney called him and told him that he can the statute of limitations on his case had fallen through and that he um he he is basically free from the charges or whatever so he ended up coming back and uh, he was just scot-free from that deal. He split for seven years or whatever. He was MIA hiding out. I don't know what the real deal was. He was missing. He went somewhere. I don't know. Um, he was with his buddies or whatever. I guess he just had money and was just doing fine or whatever. Maybe he had work or I don't really know what his deal is. But um, he comes back and he's living with my grandma they well she welcomed him home and they were living at the same place where he grew up and uh you know he had help and um he was working and stuff and it, you know it wasn't too much longer after that that he met my mom and um and i was conceived right and um about not quite a year after i was born from what i know my grandfather was in Alaska and he came he came back on um, he was flying back in like a puddle jumper plane 
to like a small a small plane and the equipment on the plane malfunctioned and they were flying through a cloud or something and it hit the side of a mountain and he died in that plane accident and what happened from that was my aunt filed a wrongful death lawsuit and they got like eighty thousand dollars out of that and um they so uh everybody in my family got ten thousand dollars except for my aunt who was the youngest she got twenty thousand dollars my aunt Susanna and um the dude so you know they this dude gets a chunk of money from that and this is back in the the early 90s so that money is worth a lot more than too and you know they split up his home which they're totally stupid idiots to have done because they probably only got like a couple hundred probably two hundred thousand dollars i don't know how much from it but they sold his home so you know they got you know an extra chunk of money from that and um you know here's my dad just being a total cheap ass like you know like doesn't i mean i'm not quite a year old and um you know he's just being a flake or whatever and like he ends up splitting up with my mom in like th i'm not gonna like validate my mom's behavior because it wasn't really that good either but you know my dad had money and he had a good chunk of money i mean i guess a dude probably came up on at least thirty thousand dollars and that's a low ball estimate you know this dude's got a good chunk of money and um you know it's like dude where's my life bro like you never helped me you never did nothing for me and he's crying about having to pay my mom child support like what's the big deal dude what is the problem who cares it's such a little 400 bucks a month isn't very much when you know your work you make like at least forty dollars an hour working as a char as a carpenter and you know you you got all this money from my from my dead grandfather's home his death which i never got to see and meet the guy because he was on his way to literally come see me right after i was born and um You know, it's like, you're such a piece of shit. And you know what? They're all, a lot of my my dad's side of the family is like that. They're all like, and they all talk shit on my grandfather. And it's like, you know, my grandfather did so much for them. And they profited off of his death. And like, like my grandfather, he saved my aunt, my aunt's hand. My aunt fell off a cliff when she was like a young teenager. And... Her hand was like broken and like falling off, barely hanging on. And he drove to like three different hospitals to make sure that they could, you know, make sure that she could keep her hand. And she has her hand to this day because of what, because of my grandfather saving her, saving, saving it for her. And she, my aunt, she, not my aunt Suzanne, but my aunt Kelly, the one who threw rocks and shit at me and was screaming at me, she, she profited off of this, you know, and she she bad mouths him and says that he was really mean and violent and blah 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 and da da da. It's like you know, the dude had worked his ass off, bought you a home, and worked a, like all his life to just put up with these people, being enabled by my grandmother Rose Kelly, who's a real my opinion of her is very little i think she's a piece of shit i think rose kelly is a fucking piece of shit she is just another typical backstabbing welfare sucking lazy ass catholic and that's just i mean it's the truth fucking hurts doesn't it to all my family who's watching this who sit there and talk shit about my grandfather inside with my grandmother rose kelly you're a fucking piece of shit you are a fucking piece of shit, Christian. You're a fucking piece of shit, Alex. You're a fucking piece of shit, Robert. You're a piece of shit, Pete. Fuck you, people. For you sit there and fucking badmouth my grandfather who fucking gave you your fucking livelihood, your nice shit, your business, your fucking nice job, your start out in life. You profited off his death. You profited off of him losing his home. You profited 
off of it. My grandmother did next to fucking nothing but enable you to badmouth him and drive him up the fucking wall to the point where he did become an abusive person. It's called narcissism. It's called, it's abuse. You just sit there and fucked with him until he was upset and then you blamed everything on him until you drove him out of the fucking house and then you seized his fucking assets and then when he died, you profited off of a lawsuit and, see, and sold his home. So, you know what? You people are such pieces of shit. I really can't fucking believe you, how fucked up you are. You are fucking low-life little motherfucking weasels. My little co my cousin Christian fucking sitting there collecting welfare, named his fucking daughter after Rose Kelly, and fucking, you know, you're sitting there, you don't work a real fucking job. You work some retail bullshit, and you collect welfare and for, your, for your kid and Wesley, my Lauren's kid. You're a fucking piece of shit. And my Uncle Alex, who's got this grudge against my grandfather and this fucking ugly ass tattoo on his back that he got or some bullshit. You're a fucking bitch weasel, dude. You're a fucking bitch ass electrician sitting there crying about fucking whatever, dude. You're a piece of shit, dude. I'd fucking love to hear you talk shit to my fucking face, dude. I really would, dude. For me having to live homeless and fucking flee from you as a kid and have to, the only real option is to go and fucking split and travel and get some sort of experience or life skills. This is the only thing I really could have done. I've had to flee from you fucking people. How fucked up and sick you people are. And you know what? Like, my dad, he didn't do shit to help get me into being trades. And I'm still stuck here living on the street as a fucking laborer, having to basically just work hard fucking shit in pound sand it's fucked up you fucking have had nothing but help you've had nothing but care come to you you are a fucking low-life fucking piece of shit from california just like so many other fucking people living off of credit and fucking welfare run their fucking mouth and talking shit you are fucking scum you know, I really don't know what else to say about it, but that side of the family, like, I'm not justifying my mom's behavior totally because she was really awful to me growing up as a kid, and, like, probably one of the only people who cared was my grandmother, and even her, she was pretty rough and annoying and narcissistic and shit, and she seized my grandfather, yeah, let's talk about that, seized my grandfather's property too, seized his business, and, you know, dude got into a car wreck, he couldn't work, my grandfather sued him and took his fucking business, and then, you know, between her and my grandmother arguing over time you know um between my grandmother and my uncle arguing over it and having to split the business between them and um you know that's just a whole other deal but you know whatever and like it, it, it's fucked up it's so fucked up that you couldn't just be reasonable to me I've never had the, the opportunity to work and live steadily and save money to buy a fucking vehicle until I was fucking homeless, out of the house away from you people, and just doing everything myself. And now that I'm dealing with that, these people are still creeping into my life. I've been going to work and I try to patch shit up with them the last couple of years, and now they're coming after me. Any sort of information I've given to them, they sit there and pretend like they're my friend, they're cool to me. Any sort of information I've given them, now they know where my know my social media, and now they're watching me and using that to track me down and hiring private investigators to fucking follow me, and they fucking even admit it. What sick piece of shit you are. You are fucking pieces of shit, dude. I mean, even as a kid, I remember my, my grandfather from my mother's side coming by the house in his truck and saying, like, I, arguing with my youngest uncle, Brad, and fucking being just like, fuck you, Brad, you're a piece of shit. And you know what? Even though I thought he was kind of crazy at the time, now as an adult, I know he's fucking right. And he, Brad, you are a piece of shit. You are a junkie piece of shit. You're living at my fucking grandma's condo that you inherit, driving her fucking vehicle, and you're living easy and well. You go to work at fucking Trader Joe's, and you're doing horrible, terrible shit. I think you're a fucking child molester, motherfucker. What do you got to say for yourself, dude? You, you, you got two fucking neighbors next to you that barely speak English. You give them a key to your fucking house. You fucking bring them food home like all the time. You give them food. And when I'm by your, I go for a bike ride and come back around before the sun's even down. The, the door's locked. You're not there. You're fucking passed out and gnawed out because you're a fucking junkie. And, and, um, 
you know, I kind of circle around a couple times and I come back around. It's about 11 o'clock at night. And these two fucking people and your neighbors that you've been feeding are arguing with two little kids in their house that nobody's known about or sees or anything that don't even, that are speaking English to these people that they, and they don't speak English. They're like, what sick shit's going on with you, motherfucker? What real sick shit is going on with you? You know, you, really, you deserve some fucking prison time, dude. You should be in prison, you fucking piece of shit. For you people to come after me when I've had to live working on the fucking streets homeless with no help and the world against me, gang members fucking following me and shit. You are fucked up, people. You'd never believe a fucking thing that I say. You wouldn't believe me if I told you the fucking sky was blue, would you, you fucking sick bastards? And, you know, I mean, the, sh the lies you motherfuckers suck up and believe is fucking sickening. You are a sick fucking piece of shit.